Ladies and gentlemen, ourselves among others! Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I, can't see I don't know. What's, What's happening? happening? Can you guys hear us? Can you hear us? I can hear you. I can't see nothing. You can't see anything. Oh, that's weird. Richie, can you see them? Yeah, I can see them, yeah. We, bo uh -huh. we both can see you guys. Let me see. <laughs> hey, you know what? Yeah, I can see it now. I don't need to see it on Teams. I can see it on Twitch. I have it in the background. Okay, cool. Perfect. Well, gentlemen, we, we appreciate you guys being here. Uh, do me a favor and, and properly introduce yourself so everybody knows uh, where you guys are located. Please plug and promote anything. I know we have the new single come out today, which is amazing. Congratulations on that. Excellent. But uh, yeah, properly introduce yourselves if you could. My name is Ray. I do all the screen vocals for the band ourselves, among others. We're located in Manteca, California. All of us grew up right here in the Central Valley between Stockton and Modesto. Um, yeah, as far as shout outs, we'll get to that in a second. This is Jake right here. I'm going to let him introduce himself. What's up, man? My name's Jake. Uh, I do all the pretty singing that you hear, and uh, I play bass. So, uh, yeah, I'm hyped to, to be a part of this band and uh, have everybody hear the single that we got coming out, you know, and to see how they feel about it. How does it feel to finally get Death Race out there for, for the masses? Oh, man, uh, it feels like a, a weight off our back. Just, you know, we this is something that um, we actually like we, we me and Ray together. We're working with Jordan, Jordan Blake, that is. Um, and uh we were writing together. We were working really hard at it, and uh, just time happened. We separated a little bit, and now with this reunion, we uh, we met up at Jordan's show, got to talking, and decided that we need to keep this music coming. We need to make this happen. So this single coming out is like a, a weight off of our backs, man. It feels like we did it for him. We did it for Richie because Richie was there when we were writing with him, and it's just, it's a accumulation of just so much hard work, and it, it feels awesome, man. What was the main, I know Richie has a bunch of questions, so I'll get to him in just one second, but what was the main yeah. reason for the hiatus between 2008 and then finally the new single? Oh man, life. <laughs> <laughs> life is hard, bro. Life, life is hard sometimes. Just, uh, having, uh, you know, five grown men get together every week and sit down and really try to write music and do things for real and keep it professional has just been tough over the years. Uh, I personally have, always kept trying to get the music going for myself and keep it going. I'm really passionate about it. If it's one thing that I love to do is play music, write music. It's my favorite thing in the world. It, um, I actually met Richie, same with Jake, through our buddy Jordan, which I know both of you guys knew him as well. Um, I used to go over to, when he lived in Galt, man, I'd go over and just hang out at his house and he'd help me a lot with um, different vocal things. He'd... <laughs> He'd throw on a little track and he's like, do some vocals on it. And right off the bat, every single time, Jordan's like, that sounds like shit. You can do better. <laughs> and he always pushed me to do better, man. He's he's just always an honest and good and good dude, man. This actually yeah, started as way. um as kind of a joke. Uh, you know, it was all good vibes, and everybody was just reminiscing over Jordan at his show. And you start seeing the members that you used to make music with, you know, those 15 years ago uh at at this facility and um we i started playing around with them i'm like man do you remember oao yeah we had other bands back in the day make your mark and stuff like that and uh it started off as a joke and like hey wouldn't it be funny if we started making music in oh yeah that'd be heck of funny dude like oh but no no it's not gonna happen it's not gonna happen and then we all just bonded over jordan's show it was very emotional uh you know it you had that brotherhood you had that connection all because of him and uh i think the show ended you drove home with our guitarist dick uh he couldn't be here today because he actually came down with a little sickness it was a little cold yesterday taking our photos feel better dick. but uh he uh they were driving home together and they started you know jamming back and forth talking about it and i got a call less than 24 hours later and they were like Hey, are you serious about getting OAO back together? And I said, I want nothing more than that. And here we are, man. 
That's awesome. So Richie, tell me how you come in after after hanging out with them at that gig, and then bam, you're you're working on the track. Well, you know, um, I've known Ray for I don't know like seven eight years now since that time uh, at Jordan's house. You know, Jordan at that time he had called me. He's like, hey, I need someone. Uh, I think they might need some guitarists like on their track. So I came out there and. Uh, Kind of helped out a little bit and you know we kept in contact all these years between jordan and ray and i and uh i saw them at the show you know that was uh that was that show we premiered hollow um so he i mean we message all the time so they know i've been kind of doing a lot of production you know nick's been helping me with all that stuff and uh it was like hey man we want to record and uh you know they're setting dates right now i'm gonna see them this upcoming weekend actually so we got a lot in store that is awesome. Hell yeah. Gentlemen, yeah. including yourself, Richie, did we bring the hot sauce? Oh, oh yeah. You well, knew it was I coming. Was shopping. I was I was watching you on Twitch while I was in the grocery store. I think you see my messages. <laughs> what I did. And, uh, <laughs> so I you bought like, the ghost pepper. I don't have any hot sauce. And I found one, one bottle by itself sitting on the shelf. And uh it says ghost pepper, man. And uh yeah. I, I I own that one. It's not too bad. I mean, okay. for real, it's it's like it's like the equivalent of Buffalo Wild Wings hot or or like the habanero, like kind of like oh, up we're, there we're near the top, them. but not that bad, like close to the top. You can be fine. Um, I've got a ghost pepper and blueberry that I brought. And Richie, what you got? You got your uh, Cholula? Well, OK, so I've got my Cholula, but I, I knew you did. <laughs> I've got my uh, my tequila. <laughs> what is that? A bottle. Where, where did, what the hell is that? Where'd you get that from? It's like a... I don't even know what the brand is, bro. It's like a $200 bottle of tequila. It, it's like shaped like the uh, Lady... Or uh, Del De Los Muertos. It looks exclusive because your background filter, it's all blurred out. Oh, yeah. It looks like an unlockable character. Yeah. Right? We haven't, we haven't <laughs> achieved that level yet. But uh, Oh, yeah. We'll get there. Gentlemen, you, the cool thing about the trivia is you get to pick the trivia topic. What movie or TV show have you seen the most... And if you get it, if we stump you, you have to do hot sauce. Whether or not you get it right or wrong, I'm going to do some hot sauce. Movie no, or TV no, I didn't show. I know movies were a possibility. I think we should do like Step Brothers or something. Super bad. Let's do something crazy. I've seen Pineapple Express more times than I can count. That's definitely <laughs> one. Yeah, I believe you. <laughs> I, <laughs> so you want to you roll, roll with that? You want to roll with that? Let's rock it. Okay. Let's do it. Richie, go ahead and shoot him a question while I uh, look up some Pineapple Express trivia real quick. Okay, got you. So, guys, um, I know what the old albums and stuff sound like. It's pretty darn heavy. Um, how does it feel to kind of go from, like, super heavy like that to kind of turning into something more melodic and, you know, getting that pretty stuff in there? I think it uh, a lot of that, just for me personally, comes with age. Um, when I was younger, I really, really liked just heavy, heavy music. Like uh, Elysia's Masochist album, even to this day, it's still one of my favorite albums. But, yeah. um, I mean, I'm 32 years old, man. I'm not really, uh, I'm not an angry teenager. So, <laughs> I do like doing heavy music, but I'm just not going to do anything that I, I'm just personally not feeling. I try to deliver everything as real as possible, if that right. makes sense. Yeah, I think totally. I think with my version of it, uh, say, same goes. We have a, a beautiful message that we want to get out, and uh, it doesn't all have to be yelled at you, man. And um, we're, we're actually going to be going up to record this weekend with uh, our uh, producer, mixer, master uh, guy in the corner right there. Uh, <laughs> And when we go up to record, we are going to be recording in a, a song that's going to be about anger. And um, I'll describe that a little bit more as we go forward with this interview. But uh, this this next song is going to be a very heavy, angry sound. Uh, and it's it's not just for, uh, how do you say, it's not just for the anger aspect. It's describing the feeling of how we feel. And you'll see that with the songs that we write, uh, we're not just doing one core project it's almost experimental we're going to take you on a journey with the music and when this album comes out and you can see from start to finish it's going to be like a roller coaster you're going to go up the tracks you're going to drop with us and you we're going to be there at the end with you to feel all these feelings i love that let's see how many times you really have seen pineapple oh. express <laughs> 
Dude, now, I, no I, I myself have seen that movie at least, like 10 times, and I did not know the answer to this one. Oh. This oh, is an extremely really? hard one, I feel. Here we go. In Pineapple Express, what TV show is Saul watching when Dale arrives at his apartment? Oh, man. I thought Hurricane Season was over. Dang it. I'm trying to remember the name of that. What is Man. the name of the show? Oh, I know the quotes. That I is the quote. The that is the quote. Mm, damn, dude, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Uh, That's a good one. I'm about to have some hot sauce on the tip of my tongue. I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. It's a, it's a, it's a number. Ooh, Three's Company. Oh uh, no, sorry. Uh, is it two, two, three? Uh, you are so close. That is incorrect. Uh, two, two, seven. Is oh. Cheers, well, Richie. Yeah, I it's on you if you want to if you want to hit the tequila or the the chulua. But dumb, and here's here's a cheers. Right after that, uh, if you could go ahead and talk about uh, any rough timetable of the album come when it when you want it to come out. What do you anticipate doing in 2024? And please show me the Gremlin tattoo up close, if possible. That's not so bad. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's not bad. Had to strip chulua. Boy, oh boy. All right, so you wanted our timetables. So um, this weekend when we're going to work with Richie, uh, we have a primary focus on the anger song. Uh, and we're going to be working with more of the planned idea. Like I said, the roller coaster that we're going to be going with. Ooh, that's hot. Sorry. I'm a little bit weaker than him, apparently. <laughs> that's what makes it fun. This is a, it's a little <laughs> spicy while you're talking. <laughs> so um, the, I'm going to describe this album for you really quick. Um we decided to go with the seven stages of grief, the seven stages of loss. Uh, my, I lost my father five years ago. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, but, you know, and it, it drove me to a place, uh, a little bit of darkness. Uh, it took me a while to get through it. And when you're in that, no matter how much people tell you they care, no matter how much, you know, you hear all these words and you hear all this love, it, you kind of have a wall up and you feel blocked out from the world. You feel very alone. And I started getting out of that, and then uh, we lost Jordan, and I seen my band members uh, going through the same thing, and we started writing together, and you know we were just a couple of guys writing music together, and it's such a great feeling. And uh, I started thinking, we got together because of this loss. We got together because we bonded over people we cared about. Let's write about that. Let's make our lyrics mean something. And so this album is going to be about the seven stages of loss, seven stages of grief. So the song that you're going to hear today uh, is going to be a little bit, it's it's going to have two different sounds. You're going to hear that happy sound, that almost, um, you know, up, uplifting sound. But if you listen to the words, it's the words about having a panic attack, uh, about how your life and your head can rush to the end, zero to 100. And uh, no matter what, when you're having a panic attack, you can't focus on the happy. You just think about the negative you think about the death and uh i want people to know with our lyrics that other people have gone through that and we're here with you and if we could help one person that's all it's about at the end of the day uh somebody who can connect with um you know the loss aspect somebody who can connect with a singular song that helps them through a tough time uh because we bonded over it and the more we talk about the album uh the deeper we all get with it and it's just such a great feeling that's deep right there. It is It is Christmas time. You add water to a mogwai or feed him after midnight, a gremlin comes out. Can we just do one of these real quick, dude, so I can I can see I can see your ink right there? Oh, that's oh, you. Oh, yeah. Let's see if you can catch this in here. Oh, from a distance, I thought it was a gremlin, but I see it's like a crazy owl skull. But like, without no, without not. having you do that, I, I thought it was a, a gremlin for a second, but I see it now, hell yeah. I, I see what you see, though. I see it. Because when, when his shirt's up, you can see the, the Yeah, it just eyes. looks like yeah. the ears kind of sticking out right there. Yeah, I, I feel it. Yeah, uh, that's I that's why I did that. My bad. That's, that's my bad right there. Badass. That's my bad. <laughs> Richie, um, you go ahead and shoot one more question off. I'm going to see if I can restump him one more time. That's some pineapple yeah, express. Yeah, go for it. Uh, let's see. So now that you guys are having that song come out today, what's uh, what's the plan ahead? What are you guys getting into? What's, uh, what's the goal? You want me to get it? The end goal after the song's dropping today is to continue going to Richie and uh, finishing out the album. We're taking our we the goal is to have it done, you know, by 
the end of February, maybe March. Um, we're really just taking our time to put out the quality and write everything intentional. You know, we don't want to just throw things together. We want to have an album that people can listen to beginning to end, um, can vibe with every single song. You know, it's like I said before, everything that we're doing is intentional on this album. And we don't want to jump ahead and skip any steps and, you know, put right, out anything, okay. anything that's short of amazing and as real as possible for our listeners. So you listed they're going to go through the seven steps of grief. What's the seventh song or eighth song for that matter going to sound like? So the eighth song, correct, because we're going to have an intro. So the eighth song will be the end. <laughs> um we actually, I don't even think we ran it by Richie yet, but um, oh, me and Ray go. got to singing in the in the studio, and uh, we were singing some happy songs. And um, I, like I said, I have the clean voice, and he has the raspy. And uh, I was singing a song, and he kind of came in over the top of me, uh, started singing with me, and those two voices combined. I'm not, you know, trying to say any, anything like crazy, but like we stopped dick from playing guitar and he goes whatever you're doing right now we need to do that in a song and whether it be a ballad or acoustic starting into something with you know the electrical uh, guitars at the end we want this song to be about acceptance uh about you still have a life no matter what's happened to you what you've gone through uh you may feel like you're drowning or sorry drowning but uh, you can get out of this and there's a life ahead of you. Nobody knows how long you have, but you need to enjoy as many seconds of it as you have. And we're going to try to put that into words. We've actually been shooting lyrics back and forth with each other because we have a, a huge main focus in making that last song be the song that sticks with you at the end of the album. I love that answer. That is a yeah. great answer. But my friends, unfortunately, we got to stumpy again. Good luck, man. Pineapple Thanks. Express trivia. When Dale is talking to Angie about her mom cooking dinner for them, he says, food so nice they named it twice. What food is he referring to? Couscous. Couscous, Couscous yeah, is yeah. correct. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. All right. Salud. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, that, was that was a Woo. lot. That was a lot. Woo! Now we gotta <laughs> ask questions while we're suffering. Well, Are you guys? Are, I ask almost every guest I have on the show this. Do you have any phobias or anything that freaks you out? <laughs> Mine's spiders, man. I can't. I can't stand it. We're uh, we're currently working in a studio where we're practicing, and uh, we have a homie. <laughs> in the corner uh and i know he's got to go one of these days but every day i get to that studio and he's chilling in the corner we have a black widow sitting right there and i, I check and it's there every time i walk in i just want to make sure he's not going and hiding in my gear or anything like that but uh that's that's my phobia i couldn't do it man if you're afraid of spiders and he's in the studio you gotta you gotta kill that mother <laughs> like i can't i can't do that <laughs> what about what about for yourself as far as uh phobias I wouldn't necessarily call it a phobia. Maybe I'm in denial, but I hate roller coasters, man. I hate really? Them. I hate them with a passion. So you're the least fun person to take to like Universal Studios or something like that. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I'm just playing with, with you. Beer. I'll, I'll watch you come down the roller coaster. I'm cool with that. <laughs> hey guys, it looks like you're having a great time, man. But I'm I'm chilling. <laughs> For sure. Is it? I did. Uh, last time I went to Universal Studios, I took uh, my little brother out there a few years back, and uh, I told him I'll go on one ride with you. So I had like, I say, a good five tall boys to get some of that liquid courage, and uh, we went on the mummy <laughs> ride, and it was pretty dope. I didn't hate him as much as I thought I did, but the mummy ride where the I, fire comes in, like right before you drop down, like, like over like this, but there's like a fire part. You said the mummy ride? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. There is some spiders yeah, it in that. Takes you, and then you stop, and then it takes you backwards through. It's all dark. You don't know what's going on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hell yeah. But yeah, I'd say roller coasters are not a. Uh, they're not in my top ten favorite things. I'd say that. No worries. We got time for a couple more questions, fellas. Um, 
I'm going to let Richie ask the final ones, but I'm going to get a final one or two in. Is there is there a particular place, let's say all of a sudden Alm comes out and it is like maximum 10 out of 10 received, things are happening, labels, stuff like that. Where do you want to go play in the world the most? Ooh, that is a good question. I know mine. Go ahead. I, I, I would love to play in Japan. Um, I was watching your stream this whole time, and uh, those those Japanese bands, man, they get down. I would love to to si- snag a show with one of those guys. Whether we get signed, whether what happens or whatever, man, uh, Japan, I'd kill. I'd kill to play there. I just want to visit someday. I've never been, but right? I definitely, definitely want to go. I would say right. for me, um, probably Australia. That would be my go-to to go play a show out there. Seems like a fun time. It's all kinds of crazy things in Australia. That's funny. Australia is my number one, and Japan is my number two. As far <laughs> right? as like, as far as like places, I just want to like visit and hang out. Richie, where have you yeah. not been? Say what? Where have you not been that you really want to travel to someday? Oh God, you know you've been I a lot of places, bro. With, yeah, I mean, I missed that train with Jordan, you know, when he was doing Japan, but <laughs> but uh. You know, I don't know, man. Like, I, I'm a big fan of just traveling around the U.S., man. It's fun. Just you and your homie is a 15, you know, passenger van and fun times and <laughs> smelly, <laughs> being smelly, being smelly, eating, oh yeah, eating ramen, oh, the good yeah. old, the good old touring days. <laughs> <laughs> the life, baby. <laughs> Hell yeah, um, gentlemen. My final question for you is: Do you guys have any interesting vocal warm-up techniques? And let's say, it, like, tonight was a night where Jordan or Richie pushed you to the maximum and your throat's a little sore after recording. Do you have any tricks on how you cool it down so you're good to go the next day? Uh, yeah. Um, our tricks are obviously drinking some nice warm tea always helps, something to soothe your throat. But uh, my girlfriend, actually, she's a really, really good singer. I hope one day she pops out there and does some music because she could sing beautifully but um she taught me a lot of vocal techniques and one of them it's like uh the best way to describe it is you ever seen the grudge movie sure yeah where the chick's like uh <laughs> yeah. yeah you basically you basically do that to bring um, blood flow back to your throat and you you bounce back super quick it's super weird but it does help okay everybody in my That's... band hates my vocal warm-ups uh <laughs> Cause uh, I fangirl out a little bit, but um, I've come to to match um, Caleb from Beartooth uh, okay. pretty well. So I'll start off kind of with some of his slower stuff, and then I'll just be walking around. We'll be running down to the gas station to grab some waters and some, like I said, he says some tea. And as we're walking around, I'm just walking in public, screaming Beartooth at the top of my lungs, uh, just to try to hit vocal match what he can do. So then when I come back to my normal voice. It's it's what I could do, you know. I dig it. Makes sense. Richie, send him out with a question or two, and then we'll let you gentlemen have enjoy the rest of your day. And we really appreciate you guys being here for real. Hey, yeah, awesome. we appreciate you having us, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, you know, with everything kind of on the horizon, the path you're going, when you guys are ready to tour, are there any bands like in particular that you guys would want to tour with? Shout them out. Ooh, <laughs> I mean, like we said, we can fangirl over some ridiculous stuff because, like, I I've been watching uh, Ice Nine Kills since they were playing, you know, tiny venues and uh, just their stage presence and what they do alone now. That'd be killer to play with them. Uh, with the techno that's been in the songs and the fun vibes that we've been having with some crazy lyrics uh, that Richie's been adding for us, I think we'd fit right in with a. Uh, electric cowboy and uh i know that'd be a great time so uh, i i have sky's the limit a little bit uh smaller you know i mean uh you were playing daisy grenade i, w- I would love to to meet those girls and and uh rock a stage with them one of these days um you know and just some of the the more local people like um a moment's notice and uh in chaos uh they're killer bands that are local to us that uh yeah. we saw them play and you know, they, they get recorded by people that we know and love. And, uh, you know, that'd be fun to to get a new family because, uh, like, we're new to the scene again. You know, we, we used to be right. deep when, when we were younger, but now thought, we're the new guys again. We're 32, year old, 32 years old and we're new. I thought you guys so were going to say Icy Stars for ah, sure. 
I uh, know. <laughs> no, we actually did play a show with them back in the day in 2008, I want to say, maybe, 2009, at uh, Stockton Empire Theater. I've we heard they've been show. doing great stuff now, though. I really have heard they've been they've been killing the game, so that's good for them. But if I can pick, um, I'd say two bands, that doesn't, doesn't necessarily, f- like, we wouldn't fit too well on the bill for either of them, but two bands that I'm really interested in are uh, Movements. I love that band. It's one of my favorites. I agree. And Fit for an Autopsy. I'd want to tour with two bands that I can hear every night and fucking love it like it's the first night. That's how I feel about Electric Cowboy. We would just be raving all night, dude, you know? (laughs) No no Good Left to Give for Movements is one of my top 10 favorite albums ever made. Oh, bro, the best. It's so amazing. Uh, gentlemen, this was this was fun, man. Congratulations on Death Race coming out. You killed it, Richie, on the production production aspect side. We look forward to the album, the concept album, the seven concept. and the seven. It's really be- eight with an intro. I heard that part, but yeah, but yeah. yeah. Uh, hopefully, I, I don't know. Should we say this time next year it's out for sure? Oh, hundred oh, percent. Yeah, we're hoping at the latest that we will have everybody ready to listen to it by summer. Uh, it's going to be a lot of hard work, and I, you know, Richie's the the one willing to to put his, you know, head He's to the, the grinding wheel and rock it with us. I think we'll be able to to get it going. Hell yeah! Hell well, yeah! Well, so I'm before, excited. Um, before we wrap this up, I do want to emphasize on the fact of how much Richie has helped us out with this process when it comes to recording, when it comes to song structure, deliverance, all that type of stuff. He really is the man behind the scenes. And if anybody wants to go and like really step up as an artist, I highly suggest you go and work with him. He's not going to sugarcoat things. He's going to teach you how to properly do things. Um, he really pushed me in a better direction on learning timing, um, how to properly record something, you know, how to use your voice properly. Me as a vocalist, um, he's worked with our guitar player on how to get specific sounds, um, how to uh, how to implement you know different verses into different things and tie everything together. It's, I mean, Richie's a well-rounded musician. He can do it all, literally. He can sing, he can scream, he can play all the instruments. It's it'd be crazy not to work with him and not listen to what he has to say. That's the plug. That's the plug of the song. year right there, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. Even I love that. Guys. You could hear. Just a little bit of Richie going through the background, you know, because we, we yeah, got to have, yeah. have a little <laughs> sprinkle of them in there. You know what I mean? I love that. Well, gentlemen, one more time. Yeah. Congratulations on Death Race coming out. I know it has been a while since music from you guys has, has hit the ears, but today was that day. And, and congratulations. We look forward to the album hopefully coming out in the summertime. Richie, thank you for being here and, yeah. and, and just being a part of this. But uh, you guys have the most awesome, excellent of days. Let's please touch base again sometime around summertime, right before the album comes out, so we can plug again and, and do whatever we can on our part. But you guys rule, man. Thank you so much for being here. Most definitely, oh, yeah. bro. Thank, Thank you, you so much us, for having buddy. us. Yeah, hey, we want to give a huge shout out to you, BG. Thank you for having us on here, man. This means the world to us. Man. Uh, just another platform to to get Richie's beautiful production out, to get our music and our words out there. Uh, we want to throw a quick little shout out to some of the people who helped us. If I got two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Um, Danny Fuentes uh, from Deadlit Studios. He's the one who came out with the lyric video that you have. Uh, Richie, he's he's our main shout out. He's our number one guy. We always told him that if he gets tired of writing music, he has a spot in our band, and it's it's always going to be his. Uh, Richard Yates from Capture Culture Films. He's our photographer, uh, and uh, Justin Sky Bentley from Hollow Ghost Designs and Pacific Sky. Pacific Skyline. Uh, he's the one who designed our brand know, new logo for Justin. us to, to show the new wave of uh, OAO. I do know Justin uh, and a couple of names out of that one, but fellas, you're amazing. I'm going to play the song right after this. This, this will be on YouTube tomorrow. Cheers. Thank you so much for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, ourselves among others. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thanks again, Richie. We appreciate you. Yeah. Appreciate you, brother. See you guys. (laughs) 